You are watching Event Horizon. This is the place where people who want to achieve something in life come to get inspiration. Subscribe to our channel for daily videos. The first thing required in building or starting a business is management. For so many years, entrepreneurs have been unserious about the way they approach business management and business disciple. Those who take these practices seriously have approached them from an entirely wrong angle. These erroneous views often lead to chaos and failure. We have more entrepreneurs now than in the past, and this is as a result of modern management and technology which many firms have been unable to manage. Also, we do not have an orderly management example for new innovative ventures. Root cause is a concept that took its name from the lean manufacturing revolution that Tai Chi and Shingo are credited with developing at Toyota. It is aimed towards differentiating between value creation and waste in terms of resources time, passion and skill of people and how to build quality products from inside out, thereby allowing entrepreneurs make testable predictions. The lean startup adapts to ideas in the context of entrepreneurship and they are Entrepreneurs judging their progress differently from ventures products of high-quality physical goods measure growth in manufacturing. There is also the startup system scientific learning, which is called validated learning. With this, they discover and eliminate any source of waste. Secondly, the lean startup method is designed to teach how to start a startup. It helps entrepreneurs adjust their plans with the build measure learn feedback loop. This enables you to know when to make a stop or when to move ahead. Vision is the bedrock of every entrepreneur after which is the strategy where there are setbacks. It is an opportunity to learn what to do to get a better result. All entrepreneurs, whether big or small, have a common trend, which is acquiring new customers and serving the existing ones, but the challenge lies between balancing both who exactly is an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who works either with a government agency, a profit or non-profit company, or with financial investors who creates a business or new products. They focus on the structure companies need to put in place to form startup teams. Entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs who operate inside an established organization. A startup is not just about a product technological breakthrough or a brilliant idea. A startup is an enterprise IT is a human institution designed to either create a new product or service under conditions of extreme uncertainty. A startup uses many innovations which include existing technologies used for different purposes, taking a new product and services to a new location to confront situations of extreme uncertainty. In a startup learning is paramount for entrepreneurial innovation to survive. Learn the strategy to help realize your vision, what customers want, not what they think or say they want and evaluate at the path you are on leads to sustainable business. Validated learning is showing based on experience that a team has not just present, but also future business prospects that are not just accurate but faster and brilliant. Lean thinking defines value as providing benefit to the customer, anything else is a waste. This is because in manufacturing business customers do not care how the product is assembled. What they care about is that the product works perfectly. Learning is an essential unit of progress for a startup because there is positive improvement when you get feedback from customers. Experimentation is integral to the lean startup philosophy. The effort in lean startup is referred to as an experiment. It is used to test strategy. It follows scientific methods which begin with a hypothesis, which is making guesses or predictions. It is guided by the startup's vision, think big start small. Zappos is the world's largest online shoe store. Its founder Nick Swinburne. Out of frustration of not getting a central online site, started an experiment with the hypothesis that customers were willing to buy shoes online. To test this hypothesis, he took pictures of inventory in local shoe stores and came back to buy the shoes at full price if a customer bought them online. Zappo started a well-designed startup of a business plan. In the course of testing he made the following assumptions first. 
assumption to sell the shoes he had to interact with customers by taking payment handling returns and dealing with customer support. This was different from market research which would have solely asked what customers thought they wanted. His first experiment provided profitable results which were one large number of customers would either buy the shoes or not to it put the company in a position to observe, interact with and learn from real customers and partners. This is referred to as qualitative testing. Even though the initial effort was small-scale, it did not hinder the vision of Zappos from being actualized. 3. In 2009, Zappos was acquired by the e-commerce giant Amazon.com for a reported $1.2 billion. If this model is replicated, it affects the startup positively. How this is possible when we break down the grand vision into its component parts the value hypothesis and the growth hypothesis. 1. Test whether the product or service really delivers value to customers once they use it. N. Experiment provides a more accurate gauge to growth hypothesis tests how new customers will discover a product or service and experiment in the lean startup model is not just a theoretical inquiry. It is the first product. This is because it allows the manager to start enlisting adopters early add more employees to further experiment and start building a product once the product is ready. It would already have established customers thereby solving a problem and offered detailed specifications for what needs to be built will be explored as the crow flies. The build measure learn feedback loop is at the core of the lean startup model. A startup transforms ideas to a product. When a customer comes in contact with those products, they produce feedback and data. This feedback could be qualitative, what they like and don't like and quantitative, how many people used it and found it valuable. The techniques in this part help to minimize the total time through the build measure learn. Feedback loop. Mark Zuckerberg, Dustin Moskovitz, and Chris Hughes were able to raise so much money during the early growth of Facebook when the actual usage was very small. First, they were able to attract investors through a wrong amount of time Facebook users spend on the site. Secondly, the rate at which it had taken over its first few college campuses attracted the attention of investors. Facebook was launched on February 4, 2004, and by the end of that month, almost three-quarters of Harvard's undergraduate student body was using it without advert. This implies that Facebook also had a growth hypothesis for startups, the strategy helps to figure out the right questions to ask. Strategy is based on assumptions. Every business plan starts with a set of assumptions which shows us how to achieve the company's vision. There is nothing wrong in basing your strategy on comparisons to other companies and industries. This will help you discover assumptions that are leaps of faith. So many famous entrepreneurs made millions because they were in the right place at the right time. Some are at the right place at the right time, but they still fail. Take Henry Ford as an example. He was not the only entrepreneur trained in the early 20s, in fact, he was joined by nearly 500 other entrepreneurs. What differentiated his success from failure is foresight, the ability and tools to discover which part of his plan worked brilliantly and which did not. This is the ultimate stand above others, the value creation hypothesis, and the growth hypothesis. The step in understanding a new product or service is to figure out if it is fundamentally value creating or value destroying. As Steve Blank has been teaching entrepreneurs for years the facts that we need to gather about customers, markets, suppliers, and channels exist only outside the building. Startups need extensive contact with potential customers to understand them. So get out of your chair and get to know them. This process confirms your leap of faith questions based on reality. There are many techniques for building an accurate customer archetype that has been developed over long years of practice in the design community. Traditional approaches such as interaction design or design thinking are greatly helpful. First, products are not meant to be perfect. A minimum Viable product MVP helps entrepreneurs start the process of learning as quickly as possible. It is not necessarily the smallest product imaginable, 
though it is simply the fastest way to get through the build measure learn feedback loop with the minimum amount of effort. Therefore, the lean startup method is not opposed to building high quality products, but only in the service of the goal of winning over customers. Contrary to traditional product development, which usually involves a long thoughtful incubation period and strives for product perfection. The goal of the MVP is to begin the process of learning not ended. Unlike a prototype or concept test an MVP is designed not just to answer product design or technical questions. Its goal is to test fundamental business hypotheses. MVP is just the first step on a journey of learning. We all need a disciplined systematic approach to figuring out if you're making progress and discovering if you're actually achieving validated learning. This is referred to as system innovation accounting, an alternative to traditional accounting designed specifically for startups. Startups need a new kind of accounting geared especially toward disruptive innovation. That's what innovation accounting is. Innovation accounting works in three steps 1. Use a minimum viable product to establish real data on where the company is right now. 2. Startups must attempt to tune the engine from the baseline toward the ideal. This may take many attempts after the startup has made all the micro changes and product optimizations it can to move its baseline toward the ideal the company reaches a decision point 3. That is the third step, pivot or persevere. If the company is making good progress toward the ideal, that means it's learning appropriately and using that learning effectively, in which case it makes sense to continue. If not, the management team eventually must conclude that its current product strategy is flawed and needs a serious change. Every entrepreneur eventually faces an overriding challenge in developing a successful product, deciding when to pivot and when to persevere. Pivots are a permanent fact of life for any growing business, even after a company achieves initial success, it must continue to pivot. Pivots come in different flavors. The word pivot sometimes is used incorrectly as a synonym for change. A pivot is a special type of change that is designed to test a new fundamental hypothesis about product business model and engine of growth. Some pivots include, zoom in pivot, zoom out, pivot customer segment, pivot customer need pivot, platform, pivot business architecture, pivot, value capture, pivot engine of growth pivot channel pivot, technological pivot, innovation, accounting leads to faster pivot. What is this acceleration? It is tempting to credit it to the product development work that had been going on. A startup's runway will determine the number of pivots it can make and it requires courage. Learning to steer requires slowing down. The startup must now learn how to accelerate lean startups. Take advantage of the counterintuitive power of small batches. Waiting too long to release new products exposes you to the risk of making something that nobody wants. At the same time, releasing a product too early makes you cede market leadership to a fast follower. Startups need organizational structures that combat the extreme uncertainty that is a startup's chief enemy. With the proper foundation, Lean startups can grow to become lean enterprises that maintain their agility, learning, orientation and culture of innovation even as they scale just as lean manufacturing has pursued a just-in-time approach to building products, reducing the need for in-process inventory. Lean startups practice just-in-time scalability, conducting product experiments without making massive upfront investments in planning and design. When we do work that proceeds in stages the batch size refers to how much work moves from one stage to the next at a time. When the batch size is one it is called a single piece flow. It is easier to spot problematic areas when the batch size is smaller than when we have a large batch size. Shigeo Shingo created the Concept of SMBD, single minute exchange of dye, in order to enable a smaller batch size of work in early Toyota factories. He was so relentless in rethinking the way machines were operated that he was able to reduce changeover times that previously took hours to less than 10 minutes. Every investment in better tools and process had a corresponding benefit in terms of shrinking the batch. Size of work. 
Working in small batches ensures that a startup can minimize the expenditure of time, money, and effort that ultimately turns out to have been wasted. There are metrics startups should use to understand their growth as they add new customers and discover new markets. Sustainable growth obeys a simple rule. New customers come from the actions of past customers. Past customers drive sustainable growth through four primary ways word of mouth as a side effect of product usage through funded advertising through repeat, purchase, or use these sources of sustainable growth. Power feedback loops called engines of growth. The faster the loop turns, the faster the company will grow. Sustainable growth follows one of three engines of growth paid viral or sticky. The engine of growth is the mechanism that startups use to achieve sustainable growth by identifying which engine of growth a startup is using. It can then direct energy where it will be most effective in growing the business. Each engine requires a focus on unique metrics to evaluate the success of new products and prioritize new experiments. The sticky engine of growth has been proven to have a 61% retention rate of old customers and a 39% growth rate of new customers. The rule of the sticky engine of growth is a simple one. It says if the rate of new customer acquisition exceeds the churn rate, the product will grow. The churn rate is the fraction of customers in any period who failed to remain engaged with the company's product. In a viral engine of growth, the use of the product by customers is what drives growth? Companies that rely on the viral engine of growth must focus on increasing the viral coefficient more than anything else because even tiny changes in this number will cause dramatic changes in their future prospects. The paid engine of growth is powered by a feedback loop. Each customer pays a certain amount of money for a product over his or her lifetime as a customer. This is called the lifetime value LTV of the customer. Combining the innovation mentioned earlier in this book with these metrics of startup will be able to figure out where the weak link is with respect to their growth and fortify the weak spots. Investing in the right amount of process to keep teams nimble as they grow helps to build an adaptive organization. Certain techniques from the toolkit of lean manufacturing, such as the five whys help startup teams grow without becoming bureaucratic or dysfunctional. The core idea of five whys is to tie investments directly to the prevention of the most problematic symptoms. The system takes its name from the investigative method of asking the question, why? Five times to understand what has happened the root cause. Lead discipline set the stage for a startup to transition into an established company driven by operational excellence. Here's how to use 5 Whys analysis to build an adaptive organization, consistently make a proportional investment and each of the five levels of the hierarchy. In other words, the investment should be smaller when the symptom is minor and larger when the symptom is more painful. We don't make large investments in prevention unless we're coping with large problems. Adaptive processes force you to slow down and invest in preventing the kinds of problems that are currently wasting time as those preventive efforts pay off you naturally speed up again. The five whys approach acts as a natural speed regulator. The more problems you have, the more you invest in solutions to those problems. As the investments in infrastructure process pay off, the severity and number of crises are reduced IED, and a team speeds up again. The five wise ties the rate of progress to learning, not just execution. Startup teams should go through the five whys whenever they encounter any kind of failure, including technical faults, failures to achieve business results, or unexpected changes in customer behavior. As startups grow into established companies, they face pressures that make it necessary to invest in disruptive innovation, innovation, creativity, and growth usually lose to conventional wisdom when a company becomes larger. An advantage of a successful startup's rapid growth is that the company can keep its entrepreneurial DNA even as it matures. Startups are constantly under the pressure of balancing the needs of existing customers with the challenges of finding new customers to serve. Portfolio thinking is the way out of complacency and lethargy. 
Today's companies must learn to master a management portfolio of sustainable and disruptive innovation. It is an obsolete view that C startups is going through discrete phases that leave earlier kinds of work such as innovation behind rather modern companies must excel at doing multiple kinds of work in parallel as a movement, the lean startup must avoid doctrines and rigid. Ideology What would an organization look like if all of its employees were armed with lean? Startup organizational superpowers? For one thing, everyone would insist that assumptions be stated explicitly and tested rigorously, not as a stalling tactic or a form of make work, but out of a genuine desire to discover the truth that underlies every project's vision. We would not waste time on endless arguments between the defenders of quality and the cowboys of reckless advance. Instead, we would recognize that speed and quality are allies in the pursuit of the customer's long-term benefit. We would race to test our vision, but not to abandon it. We would look to eliminate waste, not to build quality castles in the sky, but in the service of agility and breakthrough business results. We would respond to failures and setbacks with honesty and learning, not with recriminations and blame. More than that, we would shun the impulse to slow down increased batch size and indulge in the curse of prevention. Instead, we would achieve speed by bypassing the excess work that does not lead to learning. We would dedicate ourselves to the creation of new institutions with a long term mission to build sustainable value and change the world for the better. Most of all, we would stop wasting people's time in conclusion, the lean startup movement has become a global phenomenon. Chances are there is a lean startup meetup group near you. There is an online group founded by Rich Collins that you can join startups and established companies need to adapt to the realities of today's business world if they want to do more than just keeping their heads above water and certainly if they don't want to drown. Try this. There are several links provided in this book that can help you try out the lean startup model. Explore any one of these websites and be on your way to greatness.